Did you know that every bounty in One Piece is calculated and assigned primarily by one character? And this would be he. His name is Brand New. So if anything about this video seems, you know, a bit off, then blame him and not me. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today it is time to dive into numbers. Glorious, outrageously large numbers, denoting the 20 most fearsome and threatening pirate things within this world. And just for some full disclosure, we here at the Grand Line Review, look, we are having some technical difficulties here today but I'm sure that won't impede the donuts experience at all. Before we do that though, it's time for a quick round of Bounty County, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. I am going to present you with two characters and it is going to be your job to select the one with the highest bounty. And if you guess incorrectly, then your heavenly punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in a consistent injection of One Piece culture straight into your YouTube feed. And if you do guess correctly, then you will be crowned king of the numbers. Here's your crown, your majesty, but only if you guess correctly. And our two characters here today are going to be Charlotte Mondor and Mad Monka Rouge. So which of these two has the higher bounty? Choose your character now and I shall reveal the answer in three, two, one. And quite shockingly, it is Montor with a bounty of 120 million berries compared to the 108 million of Mad Monka Rouge. So if you guessed incorrectly, then well, you know the thing that is you need to do. And please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. But we are immediately going to commence our rise to the top of Mount Bounty with number 20, Eustace Captain Kidd. A man who I would say is best described as the second most popular character with red hair and a missing arm. So he's basically junkyard budget Shanks. However, even dollar store Shanks packs a serious punch and so he comes in at 470 million berries. Quite a lot really, although sadly this does make Kid not the first, not the second, not even the third, but in reality he is the fourth most valuable member of the worst generation. A pretty tough break for someone who, when he was first introduced on Sabadi, was the highest valued member. So what was once a shiny gold Eustace Kid is, uh, no, I don't know, what, whatever's lower than bronze. Still, number 20 is not too bad. But moving forward to number 19, we have our newest ex-Warlord of the Sea, Edward Weevil, 10 up in Kid, with a total of 480 million berries to his name. A pretty incredible amount, really. I mean, I give Kid a lot of crap, but these high 400 numbers are almost impossible to reach, and it really does go to show that a pirate has gone above and beyond in the realm of being a mighty nuisance to the world government, and so it only makes sense that Mini Whitebeard would find himself in this area as well. And look, I'd say more about him, but at the moment, there's, there's not much more to say about him, and there never has been. Following along in number 18, we now have Mr. Popular fan favorite Trafalgar Law skimping in with a nice round 500 million berries. And Law has quite a bit of commonality with our first two contenders. Like Kid, he is a member of the worst generation and like Weevil, he was once a warlord of the sea. Except Law happened to do these things better and so he is higher. And let's be honest, it's mostly as a result of him allying himself with the unstoppable force of rubber-based destruction that is Monkey D. Luffy. But even then, as one of the most overpowered characters in the series, Law certainly belongs on a list like this. So with that out of the way, let's move on to ten ten. Coming in at number 17 on the highest bounty list with a bounty of 542 million berries, we've got the former leader of the Hapo Navy, the one, the only, Don Chin Zhao. Chin Zhao has always been a fascinating character to me because of where his introduction lies within the story as a whole. We get introduced to this 17 foot tall old man with a Super Saiyan beard and a deep hatred for Garp and his family very early on in the Dress Rosa story arc. And not only does he have a massive bounty, he also happens to have Conqueror's Hockey. Despite Despite his eventual alliance with Luffy and his lack of a relationship with the Doflamingo family, Chin Zhao essentially acts as Driss Rose's equivalent to Cracker from Whole Cake Island. He's a wildly formidable foe that Luffy has to surpass before he can actually reach the big bad of the story arc. When discussing Driss Rosa, it can be very easy for readers to forget how exciting Luffy versus Chin Zhao was week to week. This was a character with the highest bounty that Luffy had faced 1v1, who also happened to be one of only 10 characters in the entire story who could use the color of the Supreme King hockey at that point. I'm supremely excited, see what I did there, to see what role Chin Zhao, his grandson Sai, and the rest of the Kano Country ship will have to play whenever we see the Grand Fleet again. <laughs> All right, so that was that was an odd little glitch there. I have no idea what happened there. Let's, let's just get back into the thing. Let's forget all about that and move on to number 16, I suppose, which is a rare tie scenario where we have both Port Gasty Ace and Little Oz Jr. storming onto this list worth 550 million berries a piece. A piece, not our piece, she does not exist. But in the 
case of Ace, I've always felt that he was a little bit undervalued to be honest, which may be an unfortunate byproduct of his bounty being assigned before we really hit the new world era of the series. And I guess it's just a little bit odd in retrospect, considering that he's, you know, a confirmed user of at least Armament and Conqueror's Haki, but eh, what can he do? And as for Oz Jr., well, he's big. He's very, very big. And big boys need big bounties. And before we head into number 15, I think we should take a bit of a break, perhaps with some sort of snack involved, because this former Sweet Commander storms all the way into the, uh, well, the background of the series, but with a pretty ridiculous 600 million berry bounty. And I can quite solidly state that Snack is the highest valued, mostly irrelevant character on this list here today. Although to be fair, his role was expanded in the anime, so that's something. But for Margarita, Snack is still mostly known for being defeated off screen by Mad Monk Arouge. Very much calling into question how much of a threat Arouge should be gauged at actually. It's certainly more than his current 108 million number. But you see, there's the thing. Snack is so irrelevant that this whole section has just subtly become about Arouge. So let's keep things moving with number 14, where we find one times Sabo, gently shattering the snack barrier and landing on a very intriguing 602 million berries. And I should say that Sabo is the first character on this list who is not a pirate actually, so that's, that's noteworthy. Even so, he is still conspiring to bring down the world government and everything. So that makes him a very, very naughty boy. Just as with his narratively identical brother Ace, though I feel like Sabo is a bit undervalued, particularly considering his position as effectively second in command of the entire revolutionary army. Even then though, that's still plenty to make him the 14th most valuable known character in the series. Still not quite as good as number th 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 Well, hello, Grand Fleet. It is I, BDA, here to let you know that Petrospero ranks number 13 on this list with a bounty of 700 million berries. Petrospero at first glance may not seem like the type to have such a high bounty, but this is One Piece after all. But have you seen the amazing candy escalator that he created? A true work of art. Now, while I may be poking fun, this is a glimpse of how skilled he is with using his devil fruit. His prowess is honestly underrated as he managed to restrain the Vinsmoke children after the plans failed, make short work of Brook and Chopper, and restrain Capone's big father and overwhelm Pedro, which yes, he lost an arm, but Pedro died. Those are some amazing reflexes. He's also the eldest child of the Yonko big mom. That's sure to get you some prestige as well. And just off the mere length of that tongue, as a huge fan of Doflamingo, I think he deserves it. Uh, just another unavoidable glitch there where for a second it has just appeared to tune us into some sort of parallel universe where other YouTubers have made this exact video. Although to be fair, it's, uh, it's not exactly an original idea. Anyway, we're going to continue this Charlotte business with number 12, where we find a delicious cracker, a very expensive cracker as well, with a market value of 860 million berries. A character who I often feel is forgotten about because he was defeated alone in the woods somewhere and then never seen again. But as a sweet commander, he is one of the most dangerous characters ever showcased in the series. And it's just a shame that the natural weakness of his abilities were being eaten. And he happened to run into the king of eating. And also Nami made crackers biscuits very, very moist. That was also not good. And what are you supposed to do about that? Nothing, you can't do crap with soggy biscuits. So here, Cracker shall remain. Probably being consistently dwarfed by his sibling, Charlotte Smoothie, who is worth a whopping 932 million berries, landing her in a very comfortable 11th place. And while we haven't seen all that much from Smoothie, even in the anime added scenes, she does possess one of the more disturbing devil fruits that One Piece has ever offered us. Or more accurately, Smoothie uses it in a disturbing way, I suppose. Something I really wish I included in my Dark Secrets of One Piece video because Smoothie's usage is, well, it's pretty undeniably messed up, but at the same time, there's plenty of dark things in that video as it is, so yeah, hurrah. Also, Charlotte Smoothie has my favorite legs in all of One Piece, is what I would say if Baron Tomago didn't exist. Ah, I mean, just look at those glorious toothpicks. But breaking the top 10 now, we have Jack the Drought, who holds a mammoth bounty of one billion berries on the dot. And prior to Jack's introduction in the series, this number was thought to be something of a ceiling of the One Piece world. At this point, we'd been following Luffy, watching him attain 100 million, 300 million, 500 million, whoa. And we thought that surely he was getting close to the more top tier players of the world, yeah? Well, as it turns out, no, no, he wasn't. Because in comes Jack to inform 
Plus that the bounty ceiling extends higher than anyone could have thought possible. So much so that a 1 billion berry number still only lands us at the number 10 spot on this list. And do you know what's a better number than 10, but only in certain cases? Well, that would be the number nine. Nu in ninth place, we have Katakuri, who comes in at 1 billion and 57 million berries. The reason why he's worth so much is probably because he's so hot or strong or whatever. He's one of the three sweet generals in the Big Mom Pirates and the strongest one at that. Katakuri has the power of the Mochi Mochi Devil Fruit, which allows him to create, transform, and control Mochi. He's one of the only characters we've seen that has awakened Devil Fruit abilities. Not only is he tall, muscular, and sexy, he has superior strength and speed. He also has one of the strongest observation hockeys we've seen so far and is able to see slightly into the future. Katakuri has never lost a fight until Luffy. All right, this is getting out of hand. This is meant to be like, you know, the grand line review, your source for everything One Piece, not the, the, the Kimmy review, your source for, I don't know, Kim things? So we've got to keep this train on track with number eight, who will be Queen the Plague, clocking in at a mind boggling 1.32 billion berries. Not that this should be in any way surprising. Like I said with Oz Jr, big boys need big bounties. And in fact, Queen is quite a noble character because in his own words, if I get any thinner, I'll steal all of your hearts. So you should count your heart quite lucky that Queen chooses to live the rounded lifestyle of uh, a ripened pear. But to examine something even more valuable, we hit number seven where we find none other than series protagonist Monkey D. Luffy, casually making his presence known in this world with an astonishing bounty of 1.5 billion berries, which makes Luffy by far the youngest character in the series to have passed the billion berry mark. But far more impressively, it also makes Luffy the only character with over a billion berries to have prevented a zombie apocalypse by shoving said zombie back into its grave. And that is exactly the kind of left field thinking that Luffy needs to compete on this level. Because no, Luffy is not the strongest, he is not the smartest, but you can rest assured that he is the only one one who has ever put an octopus down his pants. Yeah, that's right, your move, Blackbeard. Which speaking of, Marshall D. Teach finds himself in our number six spot with a commanding and hard to say bounty of 2,247,600,000 berries. I mean, really, we just, we couldn't have gone for 2.5 billion, nice round number like Blackbeard's Buddha type belly. No, no, that would be far too simple. To be fair though, from here on out, these numbers are going to get just a little bit insane. I mean, to be completely honest, some of these read more like bizarre phone numbers than actual bounties. Next up though, we have a bounty that I've been greatly looking forward to presenting. And coming in in fifth place with a bounty of 4 billion, 48 million and 900,000 berry is Shanks. This makes a lot of sense as out of the original Yonko, Shanks was the youngest and newest of the bunch. So his piracy career has been a lot shorter than those who rank ahead of him. Not to mention that unlike certain other pirates, Shanks has been repeatedly portrayed as a very low key figure who seems more interested in keeping the peace than creating trouble. So regardless of how strong he and his crew may be, his actions as a pirate probably don't warrant a bounty higher than a very respectable 4 billion. Thank you, Mr. Morge for your insightful yet unsolicited opinion. And I guess in the interest of finishing this video without further interruption, we are now going to move on to number four where we find ourselves a large maternal figure known better to most of you as Big Mom. Charlotte Lin Lin is a true force to be reckoned with, bursting into the bounty realm with an ever impressive 4 billion and 388 million berries. Here's the thing though, unlike the kind of uh, weird Blackbeard number, there's actually some reasoning behind this. Because in Japan, the 88 portion can be read as haha, which means mother. But even further than that, Ha also frequently becomes Ba and Baba means old lady. So there's this beautifully simplistic well of puns happening with this bounty. And just in case you were curious, Shanks has a very similar thing happening in his number as well, as the 489 numbers in his bounty can be read as Shiyaku, which sounds like Shanks or Shankusu. And yeah, it's not perfect, but apparently in Japanese, the pun is very, very obvious. But to award the bronze medal, we have another of the four emperors landing himself in the number three spot, this time being Mr. Kaido, with a wild 4,611,100,000 berries. It's another one of those tricky numbers to say, but also a number with some nice hidden meaning. Like many of the others, it does seem a bit arbitrary to us English speaking swine, but the important part here is the 110, which can be read as Hyakuju, which very vaguely means beast. But I suppose I should say at this point that Kaido actually currently holds the highest known bounty of any living character. Yes, there is potential for a figure like Dragon to top that, but his bounty is unknown at the time of this recording, so for 
for now, Kaido has the honor of being the highest valued living creature in all of One Piece. However, that does not stop him from being dwarfed by the figures of old, such as Second Place, where we find none other than Edward Newgate, sky splitting his way onto this list with a bounty of 5 billion and 46 million berries. And of course, that 46 million, as with many other top tier figures, holds a bit of meaning because it can be read as shiro, which means white. A very basic pun there, but very appropriate. And I do love that this 46 million is essentially there as a, it's a bit of a branding signature, really, because that is exactly the kind of crap you're allowed to pull when you have been crowned as the strongest man in the world. I mean, who's going to question you? The second strongest man? No way, he'll just get slapped like a little bit. Also quite notably, Whitebeard is one of only two known figures to have crossed that five billion threshold. With the other being, of course, our undisputed number one highest known bounty in the series, which of course belongs to the former pirate king, Gold D. Roger. Sitting on a greedy and mountainous five billion, five hundred and sixty-four million, eight hundred thousand berries. And this number is quite remarkable in a couple of ways. Firstly, because the 5.5 billion number mimics that of Roger's son, Ace, who also had that double five feature happening in his bounty of 550 million berries. So there is a nice connection there, but it does get crazier because the string of numbers five, six, four, and eight can be read as Go Ro Shi Ya or Go Roger. So just like Shanks, Roger quite literally has his name embedded into his bounty, which is amazing. And good luck to anyone wishing to surpass this absolutely wild number. And of course I must ask for your forgiveness for all of the, uh, the technical hiccups during this video. And I'm certain that we'll have them fixed for the next one. Bye. But if you'd like to see more bounty talk, then check out this playlist examining the true bounties of One Piece. What characters like Luffy would be worth if the world government knew everything about him. And these results are sure to astonish you. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review, and I look forward to seeing you there.